on our on my stories last week uh, it was decided by you I had lots of uh, lots of good ideas as it Tim and his tinkle and um, uh, ball boy balls boy um, I don't know, and, and various others but a uh, lovely lucky talisman has been christened lucky dick so here he is lucky dick up to you to decide to decide whether he's lucky or not oh there we go um so i'm, I'm pleased about that and i realized that actually he was in my first weird paintings so he's kind of he's been with me on this weird paintings journey right from the start so he's definitely part of the whole uh, part of the whole elevenses i think an, an integral part of the elevenses <laughs> what does that say really when you're saying that a, a man who's exposing his rather large um testicles um is is an integral part of your life i don't know anyway should we move on okay so first um image this morning I'm say painting but it's not really a painting it's uh this is an engraving so this is a follow-on from Cadmus um, and what can we see here we can see that's actually a lovely double portrait this is a lovely lady um, who is looking rather lovingly bizarrely into the eyes of a sort of snaky type thing and if you notice in fact the lower part of her body is a serpent as well and if you look at the text on the bottom, uh, you can see the words Cadmus and Hermione. Um, so if you recall, just really quickly, let's have a quick recap because there's nothing, never anything wrong with a quick recap. So this is Cadmus, who was the founder of Thebes. Um, and he um, was had told his followers to go and make a, a sacrifice at a well which they did and unfortunately they then got killed by dragons and so Cadmus wondered where on earth they were, went down to the well and saw them, his followers killed and he for some reason was able to, to kill the, the dragon. So he killed the dragon and he was then told to plant the dragon's teeth into the ground um uh from a from one of the the goddesses and so he he did this the teeth sprang up the men all started fighting each other because they they sprang up as spartans they all fought until only five of them were left you following me <laughs> it's quite i realize it's quite a complicated story in many ways was a lot of bits to it um and um so yes only five of them were left and those five Spartans along with Cadmus were the uh, the founders of Thebes and um, so then we come to this this image which is what happens next so Cadmus lives as one of the, the the rulers of Thebes but actually he doesn't have a terribly happy life and 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 bad things happen to his children and, and to his grandchildren and one day he sits and he laments to his wife Harmonia or Hermione uh, he says to her you know we've had such an unlucky time there must be something that's that's happened you know maybe that was was that a sacred dragon that i killed and and he says out loud he says if that was a sacred dragon that i killed um then let me be turned into a dragon and in ovid's metamorphosis dragon and snake um the terms interchangeable so it's a it's, it's a little bit confusing but but they are um, and so with with these words Cadmus then realized that what he what he said was was true um, and it was a sacred dragon or a sacred serpent that that he'd killed and he turned into a snake snake or a serpent um, and so this is an image of Cadmus as a serpent Harmonia is still in love with Cadmus she's lived with him for forever and so she says not forever but they've been married a long time and so she says okay 
if he's going to be a serpent, let me be a serpent too. And so she then also transforms into a serpent, which is she's in the process of doing here. And they slither off um, basically out of the story of metamorphosis or out of the poem of metamorphosis. So that was the that was the the end of um, of Cadmus's story. He is turned into a serpent by the gods, along with his wife Harmonia. So that's what this is showing here. Obviously, the uh, the two guys off to the left hand side don't really know what's going on, as they wouldn't. Um, so they are quite understandably heading off whilst gawping at the uh, the site that, that is uh, that is in front of them. They can't quite believe it. Uh, so there we go. That's the the end of the story of Cadmus and Harmonia from it's it's from Greek mythology, most famously told perhaps in Ovid's Metamorphosis, which is a great book. It's one it's, it's something you can dip in and out of, but it's definitely it's brilliant. Um, okay, so now to our second painting. This is um, this is an image of an Annunciation, and this is this has to be one of the best images of an Annunciation that I've seen in quite some time, just because it really made me laugh. So just look. Okay, I'm going to show you a detail. Um, so look, it's like, so God who is dressed up as a bishop, uh, so this is late 15th century, and it's actually Spanish, but it has a lot of um, Flemish features. So you'd be forgiven if it was if you thought it was Northern European. It's it's not. It's a um, it was. I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute. But Spanish, very likely. Uh, uh, so so God is blowing this golden stream of light, beams of light, out of his mouth, um, and Jesus is heading down them towards Mary, um, kind of like he's on a slide. It's like what? on his little slide with his little cross holding his cross um, and then you can see there's a dove there so we've got the father and the son and the holy spirit uh, all in uh, in in one uh, line in in this uh, in this case um, and then heads into just notice where this beam of light is heading it's kind of heading into mary's ear isn't it um yeah, we know. If you've watched uh, curated canapes and cocktails, then you'll know that um, it was believed in some quarters that uh, Mary conceived through her ear um, and gave birth through her mouth. Perhaps I don't know. That's uh, that's kind of the, the second the second part of the uh, of the. Um, the the myth only it's not um this is all to do with weasels and if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm going to park that for um for now and and you can actually just go and have a look at my curated cocktails and canapes and cocktails uh the one that's called oh what's it called something about weasels um and uh, and you'll you'll understand what i'm talking about um but okay so uh, I love this for more than one reason. So we've got Jesus sliding down a golden slide into Mary's ear, basically. Um, Mary is, I don't know, she's sort of a, a little bit of a strange expression. She's kind of like, oh, a little, a little bit flummoxed as she, as she may well be. Um, not entirely sure what's going on, but it's the angel Gabriel that gets me. Just look at the angel Gabriel. <laughs> it's like, it's, it looks to me as though he's sort of speaking out of the side of his mouth. He looks a little bit flummoxed as well, in my opinion. And so I kind of feel as though he's sort of messed up his lines a little bit. And, you know, he's only got a few lines. And so he's kind of a bit flummoxed. He's like, oh, oh, do not be afraid, Mary, which is presumably what this... Um, what this this line of, of of text said it's you know it's the do not be afraid i, I bring glad tidings um so uh yeah but i i just think he, <laughs> everyone looks a bit disturbed in this painting which is probably fair enough because let's face it it's always going to be uh you know it's always going to be a, a tricky moment certainly an unusual moment wasn't it um so yeah but the 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 way that it's painted as well is quite is quite unusual because 
it is um, it's very much in the northern tradition and that it's very finely painted so we've got some fantastic little um, little details the, the the cloak of Gabriel the the background you can see through the door there um, the, the 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 drapery it's all actually in individually it's all really quite convincing um, but then the overall perspective sort of has a a logic of its own should we say it's not uh, it's not a terribly convincing space overall um, which was typical of northern artists um, in that they uh, so this is late 15th century so they weren't following any kind of laws of um, perspective mathematical perspective in the way that Italians were by this point they did everything sort of by by eye and made it made it look all right. I mean, he hasn't quite managed it here. Uh, we don't know who the artist is, um, but has become known as the the artist of the the Catholic kings, and that's because this panel was probably part of a of a much wider um, um, well panel is actually a retable so a, a sort of a series of, of panels altogether probably eight maybe even ten um, that would have stood either on or behind an altarpiece and this was probably commissioned by Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella of Castile um, when they their children married so their children their daughter married um, uh, Habsburg so uh, she married uh, sorry Duke of Burgundy is that Habsburg yeah I think so um, um, uh, yes yeah, so Philip the Fair one of the Dukes of Burgundy and the son married Margaret of Austria so obviously very important sort of dynastic marriages and so it said that they they had this commissioned for the purpose of probably both of their marriages um, but also quite interestingly um, more recently art historians have thought that perhaps Mary is actually has actually been made in the likeness of their daughter um, Joanna of, of Castile who was marrying um, Philip the, the, the Fair the, the, the Duke of Burgundy um, so god poor girl I mean she had an interesting interesting um, hairline didn't she but they, they said that this was um, this is possible because they thought that Ferdinand and Isabella were trying to convince the world that their daughter wasn't quite as mad as the world thought she was um, poor Joanna was kind of became known as the the mad queen and uh, and possibly she did have some um, some uh, mental disabil disabilities or problems um, but uh, yes so they, they had Mary made in her image to show that she was um, to kind of portray her as pure and innocent and 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 kind and gentle and all the things that Mary is um, to sort of promote to the world that she would make a great a great wife uh, but if that is Joanna of um, of Castile, then I think that Angel Gabriel might be related to her because just look, just look at the hairline, just look at the um, just look at the the chin, the nose, the eyes. There's so many facial features that are exactly the same. So I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so perhaps the Angel Gabriel and. Uh, was, was modelled on Joanna as well. I'm sinking. I'm just gonna pull myself up. Sorry. I've got the magic stool again and I think I've put it in a different position so it's um it's not at its lowest setting which it normally is oh nightmare ah so there we go fantastic annunciation Jesus on a slide going into her ear look at curated canapes and cocktails if you're not entirely sure uh, why I find that funny and um yes and then we come on to this freaky dog freaky dog this is the one that I put on my stories um oh my word I mean what is this is this supposed to be a portrait of uh, a human in in dog form um is it from a horror painting um or is it just that the artist was maybe a little bit rubbish unfortunately I think it was so it's from this it's, a, it's from a, a portrait again um Okay, so this is not a well-known portrait. This is not a, a well, well, we don't know um, who the, the artist was, um, but this is Count um, Johann Draskovich. 
um, from Croatia who lived in Trakastan Castle. And Trakastan Castle was um, given to the Dracovic family um, I don't know, 15th century, 16th century. So this dates, uh, there's, and I'm actually covering it up. Um, so kind of just about where this part of me is, there's a date uh, which reads 1672. Um, so this little fellow is uh, is one of the the, the dynasty of Dracoviches, um, and it, in fact the castle in which they lived was has been preserved uh, as a as a museum. So if you go to Croatia, then you can you can go and see this fabulous image. But it is very curious. So he's kind of dressed up in a pseudo military uniform, isn't he? Um, with and and and. You can't see terribly well, but what he's holding in his hand uh, are musket balls. And just on the, uh, um, so there's sort of a basket of them. It kind of looks like a, a basket of fruit for all intents and purposes, but only it isn't in this basket of cartridges and muskets and some unidentified larger silver egg-like objects, which presumably are something to do with, um, with military, um, military things, guns and cannons and things. Um, Mr Beyond the Palette and I had a long conversation about this yesterday um, and he would probably be holding his head in his hands going, military things? Don't call them that! <laughs> so things from guns and cannons and stuff. Um, so this is, this is clearly, I think, um, I think that uh, Croatia was, or it wasn't Croatia then, but that whole area was um, was at war with the Ottoman Empire, so I think it probably had something to do with, with those wars. Um, so this dog is just a little bit of a companion, a strange companion for this strange little boy. But maybe even the dog did look like that because I'm going to finish with this image because this is a real dog. Um, and I, I don't know whether you recall, this went viral a few years ago. Um, what's he called? Yogi. Yogi the... Shippu. That's... I can't... I think, no, they're not called Shippus, are they? Anyway, <laughs> something like that. Some kind of <laughs> hybrid. Um, and it, yeah, it looks like a human, but this is a real dog. Uh, so good evolution, because obviously humans well I don't know actually does it look freaky or do do we want to look after it more um the 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 idea is that it's a it's a psychological thing it's called baby schema um when animals look like humans or kind of cute humans so big eyes and kind of chubby cheeks and it makes makes us want to to look after them um <laughs> I don't know that's a, that's a very strange dog so strange dog one strange dog two with that, I'm going to turn paintings back off and comments back on. Um, so, oh, I was quite interested um, to read about, I'm sinking again, this is a nightmare I need to remember this next time. I got it right and then I forgot, this is what you get when you don't do things on a Monday, so you don't do it twice a week. Um, so yes, I was I was really interested about the the, the altarpiece. Um, just reading that it was possibly in the image of um, of Joanna. Um, wow, I mean, kind of what an honour, really, in a way, to to have the Virgin Mary made in your image. It's a shame we don't know who the artist is. Is was. Oh hi, Joe. Yeah, that dog is terrifying. Um, <laughs> just and I just and I was thinking you know is this is this some kind of really clever artist who has um you know created something extraordinary some kind of portrait and done something really innovative and it's like no actually he's just a little bit shit um so both dogs are really cute oh Adrian that's nice <laughs> So anyway, on that note, I wish you all a very lovely Thursday. Um, I did put a thing up on my stories. So if anybody hasn't seen my stories and you want to put your two penny worth in, I'm just wondering 
what day and this isn't going to oblige you to um to book one but i'm just trying to figure out what the best time and maybe the best day now is to do um to do my zoom tours i was doing them at 6 6 15 because i was kind of figuring that most people went out at work and it was a nice cocktail hour or time to relax before before dinner um, but now I know that things are changing again so maybe I'll make them a little bit later uh, so if you head to my stories and you want to just let me know what time would work for you if you were ever to book one um, then that would be um, that would be great oh thank you Joe. so interesting so glad I caught you live that's really nice to, to see thank you very much um and yeah this will go up on um on my feed and curated canapes we've got a few more trailers this time kind of changing things up a little bit more so I, if you didn't see my ballet that's quite a sight to behold um and i will oh ricky hello we're just uh, we're just wrapping up i'm afraid um uh yeah so i will hopefully see you all soon <laughs> good morning and thanks for joining and see you soon and katie <laughs> bye thank you bye